In this episode, we will look at a question from subscriber Ajun Babu. Can you please make a video about why gravitational potential is negative? Thank you Ajun for your question. It's a good one. Gravitational potential is a gravitational potential energy per unit mass. So gravitational potential and gravitational potential energy automatically have the same sign. Therefore, I will rephrase your question. Why is gravitational potential energy always negative? To fully enjoy the content of this video, you need to be familiar with a fundamental concept in physics, the concept of work. So give me 30 seconds to remind you what it is. Work is a transfer of energy. Imagine you have a physical system here with a given energy E. If you work on the system, you will change the energy E of the system. The change of energy will be equal to the work you did. So work is a transfer of energy. If you want to dig a little bit more into that, I recommend that you check this video, What is Energy? The five first minutes of the video will give you the academic definition of it. And uh, you can also check this video, which is quite short. It's just to get more familiar with the concept of work. Okay, that is done. So now let's look at gravitational potential energy and figure out why it is always negative. Imagine a mass m in gravitational interaction with a smaller mass, little m. You could see this like a planet and a moon. These are in gravitational interaction because there is a gravitational force between them. An attractive force, which is proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. If I want to increase the distance between these two masses, what do I need to do? I could pin the planet on the board and pull the moon away. After a certain time, the moon would be there, displaced by a displacement delta x compared to the original position. When I applied a force like this, I lost energy. Yeah, it cost me energy. It was tiring. Therefore, I transferred energy to the system. I worked. The work was here, the force by the displacement. Suppose I apply a constant force. From the point of view of the system of the two masses, the work I did on it was positive. The work I did on it is also equal to the change of potential energy of the system, which is therefore positive. So the potential energy of the system went up. Suppose now that I want to separate fully the two objects. That means that the mass m is at a distance of mass little m that can be considered like infinite. What happens to the gravitational interaction in that case? You see, the gravitational force is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between the two objects. In that case, there would be no gravitational force. If the gravitational force is zero, that means there is no gravitational interaction, therefore no gravitational potential energy. In that case, the potential energy of the system is zero. Now, wait a minute. The potential energy here is zero. But to reach this situation from this one, I had to work meaning I had to increase the potential energy of the system to reach zero. That means that in this situation, the potential energy was negative. I can even generalize and say that for all systems of two masses, which have a distance less than infinity, the potential energy will be negative. The mathematical expression for the gravitational potential energy of a system of two masses is written like this. It's proportional to the product of the masses and inversely proportional to the distance between them. The question is about this minus sign here. You see that big M and little m are always positive. Distance always positive. So this block is always positive. Therefore, the potential energy is always negative. Let's see how this negative sign shows up. For that, I'm going to define a mass big M distant from a mass little m by a very big distance. So big that I'm going to consider x here, the position being infinity. That gives me a potential energy here of zero. Yes, 
because the distance is infinite, infinite or nearly infinite, the gravitational force, which is proportional to the product of the masses by inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them, will be zero. Therefore, there won't be any potential energy between these two. Now, suppose that I want to bring this mass little m closer, let's say at a distance r from mass big m. So I will have to work for that. So I'm going to do some work. What I want to do is calculate the potential energy at this position. So I need to make sure that the potential energy here, because it was zero at start, will only correspond to the work here, meaning that I don't want any of the work to go into the kinetic energy. I don't want to change the kinetic energy of the mass to m during the travel. That means that when I'm traveling, or when the mass little m is traveling, the forces on it need to be balanced. There's a force of gravity on it. And the force, what I apply, should be equal to the force of gravity in magnitude so that the speed of little m stays constant. There's no acceleration. I want to calculate the potential energy here, so I just need to calculate the work. So I would say work is force by displacement, right? Huh, wrong. Because in that situation, the force changes with the position. Yeah, you see, the applied force needs to be equal to the gravitational force. So I need to integrate from initial position to final position. This applied force is a gravitational force. So I can write it here. I already chose a positive direction for my axis towards the right. So the applied force that I'm placing here will be positive. G, big M and little m are constant, so I can remove them from the integral. And I end up integrating 1 over x squared between infinity and O. What is a, a primitive of 1 over x squared is minus 1 over x. So I can put this. Oh, and infinity. I just developed that. So minus one of the R, the final position and the initial position, minus minus one of infinity. Well, one of infinity, that's zero. So I end up with minus GMM over R. Which is my gravitational potential energy. To summarize, two masses interacting gravitationally will be attracted to each other. And we have shown that in that case, the gravitational potential energy for that system is negative. We can do the same thing with electric charges. A positive charge, say, and a negative charge here will be attracted to each other. And by a similar reasoning, we would find that the electrical potential energy of this system is also negative. Or it could be equal to zero if these charges are infinitely far from each other. What about if I have two positive charges, or two negative charges? They repel. Imagine the two positive charges infinitely far from each other. So that's a distance nearly infinity, about infinity. I want to bring this charge closer. For that, I need to work. And here, this time, I need to push because they repel each other. So I need to provide energy to the system. The potential energy when they're infinitely far away is zero. So when I work on the system, I will increase the potential energy of the system, making it positive. So in that case, my potential energy will be positive. Now this is very important. Let's stop for a minute and have a look. When the interaction is attractive, that means that the potential energy of the system is negative. When the interaction is repulsive, that means that the potential energy of the system is positive. It can also be zero, 
but that means there is no interaction within the system. In other words, that the objects that would be interacting are infinitely away from each other. I hope this video helps you understand why gravitational potential energy is always negative. It's because the gravitational interaction is always attractive. I also hope that you see something more general, that you see a relation between the sign of the potential energy of a system and the nature of the interactions within the system, attractive or repulsive. Don't hesitate to post more high school physics questions in the comments. I will try to answer them directly and I'll pick some to be answered with a video. Did you find this video useful? Yeah? So smash the like button, subscribe and hit the notification bell. This really helps the channel and encourages me to make new videos. We're done for today, so I'll see you soon for the next episode of Physics Made Easy. Ciao.